Welcome to Scene TV, I'm Marcus. Today we are at the Oxford Hotel upstairs in their function space where we are chatting with the podcast guru extraordinaire, Benjamin Mayo McKay. How are you, dude? I'm well, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Welcome to Scene TV. Thank you very much for having me. Oh my God, tell me. First off, let's start with podcast. What is it? There's so many people out there. They've, got, they've heard the word, they know it, that, you know, they've seen it around, bandied here and there. But what actually is it for these people? A podcast is like a radio show except online. It can be on any topic, for any length, and it's free. So it's accessible on iTunes, Spotify, and any other streaming site, or directly from a provider's website, and it's just a bit of free entertainment. Yeah, fun. So what made you get into it? Um, I had a love of Doctor Who about six years ago, and I was looking for a way to, uh, I suppose, bring my love and share that with other people. So I started the podcast back in 2010 called Doctor Who The Preacher's Podcast, and that became very, very popular. And I did a couple of live shows with that that toured Australia, and I also ended up working for ABC Radio for a while. And then at the end of that, I wanted to expand my market. I felt Doctor Who was dying off a little bit in popularity and in quality, and I wanted to reach a broader spectrum of people, so I decided to start up Benjamin May McKay's Talk To Me, which uh, trumped the success of the Doctor Who one by, by miles, and I got to speak to a whole range of people from all over the arts and entertainment world. And so how did you choose that genre? Is it something clearly that you're passionate in? Mm, it, it is. I think that you have to know and love what you're talking about, as I'm sure you'd know by, by doing this. You know and love Adelaide, and I know and love the arts. So if I didn't have that grounding, I think it would make it a lot more challenging to talk intelligently to these people who work in that day and night. So tell me some of the people that you've interviewed thus far. Um, I spoke to Zoe Wanamaker, CBE, who starred in My Family and in the first Harry Potter movie. I spoke to Cody Christian, uh, who was in Teen Wolf and Pretty Little Liars. And just two days ago, I spoke to David Yates, who directed the last four Harry Potter films, who's directed the new Tarzan movie, and is working on Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Um, I've also interviewed about uh, 50 or so people, uh, including musical theatre stars like Rob Mills and Kurt Phelan, and a whole range of TV and, and entertainment guests. It's, it's a great medium to talk to, to famous people and find out the inside story, if you will. So when you're talking to um, you know, the director of Harry Potter films, mm. do you find that, I mean, because obviously that for him was you know, a few years ago now, now he's probably moved on to something else, I would say. Um, do you find that those people like uh, giving the information of you know, what they've done in the past? Um, about Harry Potter? It really depends who sets up the interview. If I'm able to go to a person's agent or directly to them, they're generally more happy to discuss whatever they've done. And I was lucky that David Yates was very happy to discuss his Harry Potter work, which is what people want to hear about. Uh, when it's set up through a PR agency, the guest generally wants to talk about specifically that show or that project. So it depends, but normally I'm lucky enough that people will talk about their entire career and the most popular projects. Who's the most favourite person you've interviewed thus far? Um, that, that, is, that is difficult. I, I was very excited to speak to Zoe Wanamaker because I loved the sitcom My Family. Um, I, I think the first time I was nervous in a long time was talking to David Yates uh, the other day. I, I loved the Harry Potter films as a kid. I have a poster of Order of the Phoenix, which was his first movie. And I think that was certainly the most nervous I've been in a long time. In terms of how nice guests are, Cody Christian was lovely. I think I, don't, I didn't quite realise the level of his fame when I interviewed him. It was more when I spoke to people who I knew or, uh, and they loved him. He was sort of idolised and I think that just how nice he was uh, I think proved to me that he was a great guest. So there's been a range and I, I've been lucky that I haven't had anyone overly difficult as yet. So far. So far. Oh God, I've had a couple of difficult ones. How, how do you deal with that? It's challenging, isn't well, it? Well, you know what? I'll even tell you names, but I can't while that's rolling because mm. that'll just get into dangerous territory. Of, of course. You know? It's like, whoa, hang on. Yeah. Um, lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what you do? You, know, you have to all of a sudden... Um, you know, try and turn it around and, mm. you know, or work with the personality you're dealing with, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, you know? what I find the hardest is when you, you give an open-ended question, which is, I think, the only way you can do interviews. Yes or no's just don't work. But the guest will only respond with one or two word answers, and you can never get anything out of them. And I think that's, that's the hardest part of, of doing any sort of interview, as I'm sure you'd know. I, um, I find when you're asking a couple of questions here and there, and um, you're, like you say, you know, your responses are yes, no, let's try it. Okay. Hey, let's pretend you're really difficult. Mm. Okay. He actually is. Um, just give me yes/no answers, okay? Mm. So, hey, how long have you been in Adelaide for? Do you like it? Yeah. Um, what do you think of the weather today? Meh, yeah, it's all right. Um, do you enjoy Adelaide? Sort of. What do you think of podcasts? 
Good. Um, um. Yeah, see, so that's how it can go awkward. Anyways, moving on. You are not that person. You're a delight. Absolutely love it. How far do you think you can go with the whole podcast? Where would you like to see it go in the future? I, I think it's very, I think once you reach a certain point, and I think I may have reached that point with the podcast where it's just about maintaining and keeping it interesting. I average 5 million listeners per show. So it certainly reaches a global market. It's huge in the, in the US and in China. And I think it, it's funny because there have been a few times where I've been recognized, not by my face, but by my, by my voice, standing in lines at airport especially because people from all over the world are there. And I think that, that sort of proves how big podcasts are. And mine is by no means the biggest. There are, there are podcasts tw 20 times as large as mine. So I, I think that as soon as you reach that global audience, you've, you're established in sort of podcast history. But there's no further way to take podcasting. I just like to use that to, I suppose, cannonball my career as an actor and as a director and even as a host. I'm happy. I'd love to do a TV show um, where, you know, an entertainment TV show sort of like Parky or, or Graham Norton or David Letterman. I think we James should get you on as a guest host. I think that would be fun. That would be lovely. I'd love to do um, that. That actually prompts my other question. Well, you're, pretty sure you're, you're pretty much answered it now. What would you be doing if you weren't doing your podcasting? Well, I, I am an actor and director um, as well. That's, that's always been my, my love ever since I was three and saw a production of Phantom of the Opera. Um, that sort of spurred it all on for me. And I, I'm uh, currently working on a show called Great Detectives of Old Time Radio Live. And it's touring Australia. We're doing nine cities. And uh, you're in it. You're in it in Adelaide. You have asked me to do a little bit in Adelaide, yeah. haven't you? I'm really looking forward to it. That'll be fun. Um, so when is that playing in Adelaide? It's here from the... Oh, dear. Now you've put me on the spot. <laughs> um, it's in Adelaide from the... 28th to the 9th of October, doing 15 shows at Tandania on uh, O'Connell Street. Yeah, brilliant. So you're into production at the moment? We are. Rehearsals. We've been rehearsing for a, for a few months now, and that's that's going wonderfully. We open in the Sydney Fringe Festival in, uh, in early September, and then we do Adelaide, then we take it to uh, Melbourne, Perth, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Darwin, Canberra, and Hobart next year. Whoa, a tour. It's a tour. It's a full yeah, Australian wow. tour. wow. Oh my God, that sounds fun. You're gonna to have to follow this guy and check out what this show's all about. Um, get your tickets. Um, hey, let's jump on a little bit to Adelaide. What do you love about Adelaide? I love how relaxed Adelaide is. It's such a lovely environment to Not work in. Not that relaxed. I mean, please. Uh, that was funny. Um, no, I think Adelaide is a very, uh, you know, it, it may not have the largest art scene, but it is certainly supportive of the art scene that it has. Festival time is amazing. You know, when we get Fringe and Woman and the festival and Writers Week, and that that month or two is just it's so vibrant and alive. It you know it can match New York in that month. It's it's wonderful. So I love I love the diversity of Adelaide. The fact that we can go from that to then being relaxed and it allows you to creatively sit and think and work and develop new projects. It's not just pushing at you all the time. And the coffee here is so much better than Sydney. Sensational. Hey, leading on from that, let's play word association, shall we? Okay. Beautiful. Um, Favourite uh, bar in Adelaide? I'm under 18, so it doesn't really... Um... You can't. I he, can't. He can't comment on that one. I'll give you an answer for that one. Bar Torino. Um, Adelaide. Home. Um, the arts. Passion. Podcasts. Interviews. Harry Potter. <laughs> My childhood. Doctor Who. The past. Directing. Creative empowerment. Coffee. Uh, what runs through my veins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's wrap it up with scene TV. A lot of fun. Uh, a show that's certainly on the rise in Adelaide and something I look forward to, to watching a lot more of in the future. Uh, good answers. We've been with Benjamin Mayo Mackay, um, podcaster, actor, director, pretty much anything creative. You've been watching Scene TV and we'll see you again for more soon.